Hi everyone, here we are, back to, back at it, and on to chapter two, which really is talking about strategic planning um, and the importance of having a plan. The idea of having plans, which you probably learned about if you took um, either management and or intro to business, you talked about planning. And planning helps you, um, helps deal with uncertainty, helps you make decisions, and is a really valuable tool. So strategic planning, the process of developing and maintaining a strategic fit between the organization's goals and capabilities and its changing marketing opportunities. So you want to look at, the, it's the idea of this inside-outside. What is it that you want to accomplish? What is it that you can do? And then what's going on in the outside world that might affect that, either to the good or the bad. So, for example, a company like M&M Mars or, you know, that makes candy bars is probably not all of a sudden going to go into the clothing making business because that's not their capability and it's not their goal. And then in the outside world, in terms of marketing, um, changing marketing opportunities is, you know, may, there maybe are too, already too many clothing manufacturers and so there's just no place for them to enter that market. Okay, so a mission statement, you start out with a mission statement. It basically, a mission statement um, uh, is what you are. What, does, what is it that you do? And um, like with product development, it, the, the idea of um, the mission statement should really focus on not just what the company does, but also the, any of the, the experiences and the benefits of the product. Not too dissimilar to um, marketing myopia, which we talked about in the last chapter. Okay, the business portfolio is a collection of businesses and products that make up the company. You know, for example, Pepsi makes Pepsi, they make Tropa Meccana, they make Doritos, they make Aquafina. Every company divides their business um, portfolio up into different, in, in different ways. And every company has a different philosophy as to how they do that. I wanted to show you this graphic. It's just kind of a, a, it's a, a graphic illustration of, um, of uh, what some companies' business portfolios would be like. So, for example, let's see here. You can see like, Kellogg's. It tells you all the Kellogg's products. PepsiCo makes you know, Quaker Oats, and and they have um, who can read that? No one can read that because it's so small. You can see though on your own slides. Um, Pepsi has Pepsi. They have Tropicana. They have um, uh, Matador. Um, beef, that kind of thing. So this just gives you an idea about about what they about what companies what what a, what a product portfolio would look like. Okay, so we have this thing, the Boston Consulting Group Growth Share Matrix. This is right from your book. It's a portfolio planning method that basically decides um, how a product is doing, how your products are doing. It's measured based by market share and market growth rate. Cash cows are things like um, things that have a high market share, but there's not necessarily a high growth rate going on. M and M, like M and M's, would be, for example, a cash cow. It's not necessarily going to grow anymore, but it still has a pretty strong hold in the market. Um, stars are things that have a high growth potential and high growth and high market share. They eventually will become, hopefully, a cash cow. Question marks are products that you're not so sure about yet. And dogs are products that are just not doing very well. So generally speaking, you want to get rid of the dogs. Okay, now that this is the product market expansion grid, you see that. Let's see if we can fix that. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Okay, so that's also a portfolio planning tool. Essentially, you have, um, you have, uh, well, four, uh, really five options. One is if, um, let's say you have, let's take Under Armour, for example. Under Armour, <clears throat> they might have an existing market. Um, say men between the ages of 18 and 25 that are 
that are runners and they have an existing product, which maybe are their, their, their shirts. And they want to increase that. So they participate in market trend penetration, which is like very um, heavily enhanced sales projects, sales efforts, more coupons, more samplings, more rebates, whatever it may be. Okay, so let's say you have an existing product, the men's running pants, and you're going to go into a new market. Let's say you've just been, they've just been selling in the United States. Maybe you're going to expand and, and sell in uh, Canada and Australia. That will be a new market. Then you have new products in an existing market. So let's just say for the sake of argument, we'll talk about Under Armour again. Um, they have an existing market, which might be the United States. And they have a new product, which maybe is uh, our running shoes. And so that's product development. And then finally, diversification is when you come up with a whole new product and a whole new market. And the market can be defined, as we talked about before, in a variety of different ways. It can be based on demographics. It can be based on geography, um, specifically geography. It can be based on, um, we're going to talk about this later, psychographics, which is how people spend their time and money. So it's a new product. Now, the other option with the product expansion grid is this whole idea of down, downsizing, which is getting rid of a product or getting rid of a market, pulling out of a market or pulling out of a, pulling out a product. Okay, there's a couple more terms. There's a value chain and the value, value delivery network. Value delivery network is internal. I'm sorry, value chain is internal. Um, value delivery network is external. So basically the point of these two concepts is that um, everybody working together to um, support the product and get provide the best product for the customer. Okay, marketing and strategy. Uh, marketing logic by which the company hopes to create customer value and achieve a profitable customer relationships. So that is basically how they're going to go about it. We talked before in the previous chapter about um, marketing management and the different strategies you have. So are you going to focus on sales? Are you going to focus on product development? Are you going to focus on, uh, you know, how are you going to go about it? What's, what's your method? What's the marketing strategy? Okay, so this is a graphic also from the book. Um, in the middle is the target, which we talked about, the, the two goals of marketing, which we talked about before, customer va creating customer value and building relationships. That's at the heart of it. And then you see there's a lot of terms on here you might not, you are, we're not familiar with yet, but we will be. On the top, in the, the second ring from the center is segmentation and targeting. That has to do with... Um, your customers, and then positioning and differentiation has to do with your product. So it's like to figure all those things out. We see around outside the third ring out um, the tactical tools, the product price place promotion, also called the four P's, also called the marketing mix. And then <clears throat> the process, the fourth ring out um, or the outer ring are all of the, at the marketing planning process. So there's planning implementation analyzing it and controlling it, making sure that it's working the way it should. And then out, on the outside, too, we see all the things in the external markets, which we're going to talk about, external um, environment, which we're going to talk about in the next chapter. Okay, marketing mix is a set of, uh, the set of tactical marketing tools, the product price place promotion that the firm plans to produce, the response it wants in the marketplace. So it's the, they're the tools, they're the marketing tools that marketers use to create that value and build the relationships. All right, a little closer look at the marketing mix. Again, this is from the book. Um, that the product is not just this. It, the product consists of the quality of the product, the brand name is important, what features, packaging, services that might be provided, promotion is advertising, personal selling, sales promotion, and public relations. We talk about that at the end of the semester. Um, place is uh, how you get it, to where you sell it, and how you get it there. And then pricing is, um, there's a whole science to pricing, which we're, we're going to talk about as well. Again, these are, these are kind of, it's just, we're still sort of in an overview of the, of the chapters now. Okay, and finally, SWOT analysis, which is also done during the strategic market, strategic planning process. SWOT analysis is an opportunity to take a snapshot, if you will, of what's going on right now, both internally and externally. So there's strengths and weaknesses, which are internal, and opportunities and threats, which are external. So what would be included in strengths internally might be, I say, let's say your company has a patent or a special process. That would be a strength. Or perhaps you have a very 
highly qualified and dedicated workforce. That would be a strength. Um, it's, it's what's going on internally. And then internal weaknesses, maybe there are things like high turnover rate or maybe an internal weaknesses that you have failing equipment or aging equipment. Or maybe it's an internal weakness is that you're about to um, you know, lose your CEO and have new leadership. Maybe that's a potential weakness for you. Or perhaps a high debt could be a weakness. And then externally are things that are going on in the environment. So opportunities, things that are going on that you can use to your advantage. Maybe a change in legislation. Uh, it could include um, changing social uh, and cultural forces, the change in what people wear, changes in what people eat. Let's say you're an organic food processor and, and organic food has become you know, much more popular and something that people are seeking out more. That would be an opportunity for you to jump on. Or maybe it also could be the economy. Sometimes a good economy can be an opportunity if, you, um, if, you, if you're a Home Depot and people are trying to save money and doing their home repairs on their own because they're trying to save money because the economy is weak. Or um, it could be, or it could, you know, the economic, positive econ economy could also be a plus. And then finally, threats are things um, that are going on, external factors that challenge the performance and fall into the same categories. Maybe in terms of legislation, maybe there's a legislation that's changing what you can sell or changing restrictions on how you can sell things. Or maybe the competitors, there's a threat, there's a competitor that's, that's uh, beginning to breathe down your back and becoming more successful or a competitor that has a patent that you don't have. So the idea is to look at all these things, try to turn your um, the threats into opportunities and the weaknesses into strengths, and to maximize on your strengths and your opportunities. So that's a brief look at Chapter 2, um, Company Strategy and Marketing. Next, we are going to talk about analyzing the marketing environment, so stay tuned for that. Okay, thanks.